What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. If you don't remember when we did the 9-11 paint job, we ended up with a couple spots that we needed to refinish and some panels that we needed to complete. Now with that being said, I had done some calling around, searching around, trying to find a proper paint booth to wrap that up. Everybody's packed out, nobody wanted to mess with it since we'd already painted it. Although I was extremely pleased with the paint job, it's very nice. It wasn't quite where we needed it to be. We want it to be as nice as we can possibly make it. So my only other option was this. We took the back of our garage from this and turned it into a proper paint booth. Now I say proper loosely, obviously it's still a home built paint booth in the back of a garage. And we did it fairly inexpensively, but I'm extremely ex pleased with the outcome and cannot wait to try it out on the 911 and some future projects we have coming. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Builds. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. So you will notice we had a professional electrician come in and wire in this switch and we'll show you what that's going to go to in a minute and outlets all the way around so now we can run stuff back here without having to drag extension cords and stuff out. So one of the first things we're going to get started on is I do want to drywall everything. The biggest thing with back here is we had all that wood that was breaking up. We had a lot of junk up top there and it was kind of gross down here and we want to make this entire environment back here nice and clean and make it where we can keep it clean so when we are painting we don't have a bunch of dust kicked up especially with this concrete like it is it kicks a lot of dust up and so that's what we're going to be working on fixing as well as getting everything else going to make it a nice paint booth so there's our first piece of drywall and it's got some uh slight curvature here which, considering none of these joists are lined up, I guess it's not joists, what would you call that? Studs, that's what it is. He knows what it is. Like myself, the studs <laughs> are not lined up. So that'll, you know, wrap around it real nicely. That'll work out good for us. So what we're gonna, you wanna start from the top and work our way down? Okay, so we're gonna start from the top, work our way down. None of these are two foot on center or four foot on center. They're all over the place. So as we go, we're just gonna kinda have to make shift them wherever we can make them work. So let's just get started and go to town. I okay. been stuck in the garage, just wherever in the garage for forever. And as you can see, it'll, it'll. Oh yeah, it will. Right. Uh, right? Yeah. You didn't bring stuff with you? Just the bow of it. <laughs> Just the bow of it, but it looks this funny.
sure you will notice as we're doing this, nothing is true, nothing is straight. It is wacky, crazy, and the reason being is this was originally just a pole barn. It was just built to put a boat and a car up underneath and that was it. And at some point of time, quite a few years ago, it was closed into a garage. And so it's very makeshift. And so everything's, it's solid, but it's about like the house down there that was built in 1920. It's all, I mean, uh, I don't think a level or a square was used on this thing. And it's everywhere, which is making the drywall everywhere. But that's, uh, that's what mud's for. So we just clean it all up and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you will notice we left this hole in the wall here. And we've got this little railing and that is for that right there, which is our filtration system for this right here. So what we're gonna do is actually build a box for this with a little roof and we will actually attach it to the outside of the wall here. And that'll be our puller fan to pull the fumes and the trash out of here. And then this is our, it's been a while since I've seen this window. <laughs> but this is actually our filter to actually pull fresh air and get a nice flow coming through the garage here without going too crazy and this will keep all the trash from coming out coming in from outside and we'll get all those fumes out of here while we're trying to spray especially while we're trying to spray clear coat up here tighten down the wrap will cut it right at that level it doesn't have to be yeah okay Sometimes I use a jigsaw, I will always do that. I don't know why. There you go. Got a hole. Got a hole. All right, so we've gone ahead and we got the box all wrapped up. As you can see, we brown glued all of our joints and everything, so we have a nice seal in there. And with that squirrel fan, it's like, you know, the better your seal there, the better it's gonna pull. And you can see it's just, it dumps out from underneath there. We've got it sealed all around the edge. What we are gonna do here, you see we have this little bit of a rake. And what we'll take is we've actually got pieces of little tin roofing. And we'll put a nice little piece of tin roofing that'll match the roof when we redo the roof on this. From the inside here, you can see our filters, which they just sit in this little drip rail kind of deal that I got going on here. You see our fan, there's a box up in there where it's wired and it's wired to our light switch. Slide that back down in there. But you flip, are you clear back there? Yeah. Okay. You can actually see it's got enough strength. That's what that's what's so nice about those squirrel fans. This is actually what's in your home HVAC unit. And so they're really strong fans. And especially for this condensed size, it pulls really, really strong. And it should very nicely suck all the fumes out of this room while we paint. But now the plan is, let's grab our mud. What I've got here is some Proform Quick Set Light 20 minute. When I did drywall, actually, 
I won't say that. <laughs> When I did drywall, though, we used five-minute stuff, and it worked really good, especially for a small job, for something like what we're doing here. I got some 20-minute. You just take some water. You'll put it in your little mix pan. You'll put it in your, your pan. We'll mix it all up, throw it on there within 20 minutes. We'll be ready to sand and continue going on. So let's start throwing up some mud. So as you can see, we've started trimming out a little bit of our paint. We did actually trim all of the edges. We know we have a nice tight seal and then we silicone them. I've got most of our mudding done. We've done a little bit of sanding. I do need to work on some of these joints, obviously with how crazy everything was. There's a little bit of work I still need to do to those. And I am no professional mudder or painter. Technically, this was my first job was mudding, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and continue. Probably the first thing, trim up the ceiling and roll it and get it knocked out so it's nice and clean. We want a lot of, not, we're going to do everything in white, including the sides. I think the floor is a little bit different color. It may be a gray, but the biggest thing is we want all that white to bring a ton of color in here. We have more lights we're going to be putting up to really get it nice and bright for when we're painting stuff and really clean. So we know, you know, obviously with a lot of white, we can tell if we got any dirt or dust in here, which being a garage, we will, but when we're ready, we clean everything up really good as we do paint jobs. But we're gonna go ahead, work on trimming out, painting, continue with the garage. So we got our walls, our ceiling, around the concrete center blocks here painted up. What we decided to go do with that is we got this Valpar, Valpar, <laughs> Valspar concrete sealer 
and that's just a great we actually found those normally like 20 something dollars they were on sale for like 11 dollars so we actually bought they had five of them left we bought all of them one for here one for the house one for dad's house because that's a really good price on that and you see we're laying it on there and we actually of course <laughs> <laughs> saving our knees with our little crest foam kneely pad helping us out here but we're getting there we're almost wrapped up in the with the paint which is a pain in the butt we are not painters we don't like painting pretty pleased with how it all came out you can see there's a little bit of ridges here and there where we mudded it was just a quick job it looks a whole lot better here than it did so We've got to get our floor cleaned up so we can go ahead and get our sealer down there and our coating so we have everything nice and clean. That'll allow us to be able to paint in here and mop up when we're done and everything and not attract, keep all this dirt and junk in here. It'll keep this whole area nice and as we get the garage done, it's a mess. <laughs> as we get the garage done, we'll work our way out that way. got the floor knocked out. Now the first step that we went through was we swept up really well, vacuumed, <laughs> had the kids come out here, we wire brushed a little bit of the junk up and everything, got any excess paint that we had from painting everything. The next step that we took, we got our pressure washer out and we blasted all the mud and dirt out of this. We also put down some Dawn dish detergent and also wire brushed some more, some of our oil stain spots to try to lift that oil out. We do have one little spot that actually came back through, but everything else came out really nice. This is a very rough surface. We have a nice seal, but it is still kind of rough here. We did go put the paint speckles down, kind of give it a nice clean look. And I think it'll, it'll keep our trash and mud out of that floor. We can mop it and sweep it and keep a nice clean painting area back here. Now once we got it clean, we let it dry for about a day, and then we came out here with, oh geez, <laughs> I painted it, our epoxy seal. This is just the pretty cheap stuff. Grabbed a bag of that spe paint speckles just to give it a little bit of extra, I don't know, what would you call that? Attractiveness for the garage, I guess. It makes it look, it gives it that garage look, you know? This will give us a nice surface. Our concrete is now sealed up good, so we're not collecting a bunch of trash or mud or dirt, anything. Now, one of the last things we had to do, considering this is a makeshift paint booth, per se, was actually to seal off that part of the garage and this part of the garage. And the way we did that is we actually took, this is a headliner material, I believe it is, that actually came from my neighbor Wally. He works in that industry and was able to bring us some throwaway pieces to use. This stuff is very thick, very heavy. It's, it's not like a fabric that you can actually see through. It's fire retardant, waterproof, and what we can actually do as far as getting any dirt or anything in it is wash this thing down, wipe it off really nice. This gives us a nice barrier in here to keep any kind of trash that's in the rest of the garage from coming in here. And I actually have my wife Kayla sew up the sides pretty nice. This one came out a little small, 
we we cut it a little small and we sewed it 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 tightened in a little bit but what we do what we'll do when we actually paint is to tape this off and then at the bottom here we took some inch and a half pvc filled that up with water in hindsight we probably should have used sand just because the one for this actually leaked and i am gonna have to put sand in it <laughs> And probably during the winter time, this will bust. So we'll have to go back through and maybe redo that. But the nice thing with this is I can actually take this and then while we're not using the paint booth, any day now, and roll that up and it's up out of the way. And we'll also be able to do the same with this once we get our pipe fitted in there. But this will give us a nice, tight barrier in the garage here to keep any kind of trash or contaminants out of our paint job. That's the main focus. I feel like the paint came out really nice on that car. The issue that we did have was the little bit of trash that we got in it. And we're gonna completely eliminate that with this paint booth. All right, y'all, that is going to wrap it up for this video. Tell me what you think. Even if you have, obviously this was kind of a dungeony, dark, kind of a trashy garage. We, when we got in here, we cleaned this thing out and started stuffing stuff in here and didn't think twice about it. But honestly, it took a good bit of time. This, was, this took us a couple weeks, a few weeks to go through and bit by bit get this all put together. But it was not, it was not incredibly extensive. And even if you're not doing a paint booth, just the making your garage work environment much nicer is well worth it i'd say be sure to comment down below tell me what you guys think about everything if there's a if there's some other stuff that we should do or that we could do differently let us know the next video that you will see on this channel is the continuation of the 9-11 build the wrapping up of the paint and final assembly we're gonna start putting that thing together so we can go ahead and get the motor dropped in and get it running I'm so excited. I don't know about y'all. It's it, this, this right here was a big step. I know it took us away from that for a few weeks here, but it will not only allow us the ability to finish that car, learn more about the painting side of things and be able to do more builds and restorations and do it all in house here in house in the back of my quarter acre lot in my little garage. If y'all would like to see some more garage rehab, and rebuilds after we get a couple of our projects like the 911 and the rabbit wrapped up be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell peace out and catch y'all on the flip side